What food should someone try if they visit your country? East African countries. An omelet made of fries, eggs and spices, chips, maye, spicy sugar cane juice, spicy sugar cane juice. My Caribbean ass quivering with joy at the thought. Bruff fries. Belgian waffles. Pralines. Beer. As someone who recently visited Belgium West Vlanders Stuf Lee sauce is also absolutely got here. If you visit Mexico I always recommend mole, chilacals and hawker to water to drink. Vietnam pho. Ban me of course. But also try bun chap if you are in Hanoi. It is a must. The great thing about pho is that there's a pho for almost everyone. Even picky eaters. Pho show. Biltong in South Africa. Brew. Coke sisters. Melktut. Following clothes behind. Donjang chigi. A delicious soup often served with Korean barbecue. Hijangguk. Hangover soup. It is really effective haha. Handmade kimchi dumplings. Find a good mom and pop shop. To die for. Meng Mayan. Cold noodles. Really good in summer. Or year round. Let's be honest. Seed hoti arc. Fried dough filled with various seeds and cinnamon. Brown sugar. There are a lot of good varieties of hoti arc sweet and savory alike. Korea has so much more than bulgogi and bibimbap. Colombia chocolates and tefiro. Or hot chocolate. I know what you're thinking. What's so distinctive about plain ol hot chocolate? Or maybe. Insert um Columbia drug joke here, but let me tell you right now, there is nothing better on a chilly morning in the altar plano than a mug of hot chocolate to fill you with vim and vigor. What makes our take on hot chocolate so different? Three things. First, ours has a richer concentration of cocoa. The rest of the world takes what is essentially sugar with powdered cocoa and mixes it with milk. Not so in Colombia. Our chocolate actually comes in bricks of pure cacao paste with a tiny bit of panela unrefined cane sugar and cinnamon. The result is a beverage that is less cloyingly sweet and more rich and flavorful, with a deep aroma that is at once sweet and nutty. Second, preparation. This, too, is different in Colombia. Rather than grind our wonderful chocolate into dust, we make it by heating our delicious ingots of dark golden in a liter. A tall pot that resembles a metallic pitcher, along with milk, cloves and a couple of sticks of cinnamon. Once the chocolate softens, we take a molinillo, a type of grooved, wooden, mace-like whisk, and beat the mixture with a motion akin to that of prehistoric man making fire. The result is a light, foamy beverage that goes down smooth. Finally, there's the cheese. Yes, you read that right. We put cheese in our chocolate. I can see your brow furrowing even now, but rest assured, this is a soft, fresh, unsalted cheese also known as farmer's cheese or white cheese that has a chewy texture, like unsalted mozzarella. Drop a few pieces in your chocolate while you snack on a panda bono con flour sourdough bread or a panda oca pillowy, savory manioc bread and fish them out once they're soft. There are many wonderful dishes that make up Colombia's cuisine, but as someone who doesn't live there anymore. There's only one dish I really truly miss, and that's chocolate Santa Firo. I'm still not 100% certain what it is you're selling, but I'm 100% certain I'm buying it. Trust me, you won't regret it, and you'll never think of hot chocolate the same way. In Finland we have this breakfast thing called place R. You put a coin on the bottom of a coffee mug, and pour coffee until the coin is not visible anymore. Then you pour vodka until the coin is visible again best enjoyed with a cigarette. A-H-H when I was in Thailand I saw Finnish breakfast and the menu at a restaurant it was a shot of vodka, a coffee and two cigarettes. I thought it was just a quirky tourist joke. Sound like he. Tart flammy. Paris breast. Cow enamel and of course a proper croissant. The proper croissant indeed. Also maybe a chocolatine pain au chocolate. Also your liter damn let it's literally proof of God's existence. Edit wow. You kind stranger for popping my silver cherry. Next time maybe buy me a drink first day. If you are in Germany eat real German bread from a real bakery. Edit fake bread from a fake bakery means for example toast from a supermarket. I love quesesle with speck and ass sweet bell neck noodles with cheese. Bacon and crispy fried onions. Poland. Pirogi Slavic dumplings. 
Try cheese and potato pirigi. Fried and topped with sour cream bacon fried onion. Also try sweet pirigis with blueberries, strawberries etc. You can also eat them as is, or top them with sour cream and sugar or a little bit of whipped cream. Biggest hunter stew with cabbage, sausage, mushrooms, plaki pios bojniku wejisku potato pancakes with goulash meat stew. They are often topped with sour cream. Halabki stuffed cabbage with rice and ground beef. It's served mostly with tomato sauce or mushroom sauce. Basque zo when you eat soup. It is freaking delish. Zapakanka toasted open faced sandwich that's made on baguette bread. It's usually made with mushrooms, cheese and topped with ketchup and green onions, but there are many different varieties. It's a very popular street food. Quickla Buraki grated beet salad, often with horseradish. It's a very popular side dish. Miziria made with either tomatoes or cucumbers. It's a salad with vegetables and sour cream. So 95% of Polish dishes are served with sour cream. Is it like Hungarian food where paprika red bell peppers is a mandatory ingredient in every dish? There's actually only 3 ingredients in Polish cuisine potato, garlic, and sour cream. FL Skestig sandwich. Just go for it. Shawarma if you go to Syria. I've had shawarma in many places, including a couple countries in the Middle East and USA. Syria shawarma is the absolute best. Too bad most people will probably never get to taste it. AHH shawarma. It's one of my absolute favorite dishes. Seriously speaking. I could eat 10 of those still won't be full. It's widely available in India as well but chicken variant. I was originally born in Iceland. Try Sky. It's like cottage cheese yogurt. Two things really. One that probably a lot of people will hate. But it's so good. Raw Atlantic herring with white onion and pickles. And the other one which everyone will love. Stroopwafels. I'm Dutch myself, and not the biggest fan of pickled herring. Stroopwafels are the best though. And I'd also recommend poffertjes. Poffertjes. Dearost Finland. For Austria I would say Kaiserschmer and sweet. A little bit like pancakes and goulash sub soup with vegetables and sausage. Edit goulash is actually a Hungarian dish. I'm sorry if I offended anyone. I didn't know. Thanks for telling me. Kaiserschmer. Imagine matches, but instead of noodles, it's with some dough stuff and with onions. I would kill for this dish. Portugal, any former Portuguese colony egg tarts and port. What about fresas in her? The original Italian preferably Neapolitan pizza. Your taste buds would explode in pleasure. If you want to try Vegemite do not eat a spoonful of it, or spread it thickly on toast. You butter the toast then put a thin spread on. I always cringe when I watch people trying Vegemite and eating a ton of it not even most Australians who have grown up on the stuff would like it like that. Anzac biscuits. Brazzler or Karks in her. Scottish Indian food. It's a distinct thing. Different even from British Indian. Lots of onion based gravy blended down to hide the vegetables. Crisp fried pakoras. Huge pillowy naan. It wouldn't be recognizable by an Indian person. But it follows its own conventions every Scottish Indian restaurant will have largely the same dishes on the menu with some house specialities. It's the most comforting thing to me. And there's probably an argument for it being the most authentic Scottish food the vast majority of people here will have eaten the tikka masala way more often than venison or salmon. And we ducking love to argue about which place does it best. Love the Indian food there. If whoever eats this is ever in birth. Try Sizzlers. Best Indian takeaway in Scotland. This was such a bizarre sentence to me. In Australia. Which has both a Perth and a Sizzlers restaurant. A chain which is like a weird cafeteria all you can eat salad bar buffet here. Recently insolvent because nobody made friends there I guess. England. Fish and chips. Out of the paper. Preferably eaten on the seafront. On a cool day. Mushy peas or curry sauce optional but delicious. Alternatively, go to the black country and get the battered chips because for some reason it's not enough that the fish is covered in batter. We must have the chips battered too. And it is glorious. While you're at it, get some bread and butter and make a chip butty because that is comfort food.
You want the chips hot enough to melt the butter a little bit. A full English breakfast. And then you must also try a Scottish, Welsh, Northern Irish and Irish version at some point too. And find a pub with a nice fire on a cold night and drink a pint of something local. We have so many breweries in the UK. So look for guest ales or see ideas and try one. Most good pubs will recommend something. Tacos. Taco Bell ain't nothing compared to the original here in Mexico. Also this plate called birria which is kinda like beef stew, but with a little twist. A crab seafood boil. If you're up in Maine, use a. It's a delicious mess of crab, red potatoes, ears of corn, sausage, and whatever seafood you want to add like shrimp, mussels, lobster, etc. You boil it all together in a big pot with Old Bay, white wine, and a bunch of other seasonings, and then you dump it out onto a picnic table and everyone goes to town on it. It's a glorious mess. Louisiana does this really well, too. Ours is generally going to be why I spicier though. Ours is generally going to be why I spicier though. Yep. Grew up in Houston, but my mom is from there. Doing another crawfish boil outside today, even though it's freezing lol. All that spice inside will send you into sneezing fits. Edit I now live in Northern California in the Sierra Nevada range. Think Donna Pass event. They make documentaries about it. If I'd had my way, when I made this comment PST sorry for not clarifying. Well done a boil then lol. We can get crawfish out here. Koshery if you're ever in Egypt. Shit's ducking delicious. Try the chili or black pepper crabs. Singapore. American hearty breakfast from a diner. Has to be 2k calories minimum. Baklava. Edit and Bonitza and Shokska salad and someone said Turkish delight and that is definitely a yes as well. Edit to someone asked yes it's Bulgaria. Argentina Milanesis. Asado for meat lovers. Dull steel ash. Mate. Choca torta. Impanadas. Corip and we eat them usually with asado. We also have more sipan, but the most popular one is Corip and Haha and Alpha Jaws. If you happen to find yourself in Zegir. Order some SV Kovnas Metten and our beer for lunch or couple of Oblo en Klebek for a smaller meal, or as a snack. Pani Puri. If you visit the Netherlands try Beterbalen it means bitter balls. It's a great deep fried snack, to have with some drinks. Just don't ask what's actually inside it. Meat pies if you go to Australia. If you go to Spain, maybe try Tumbert. It's a Majorcan dish consisting of stacked layers of fried eggplant, zucchini and potato, with some bay leaf, dressed tomato sauce on top. Yep, it's absolutely amazing. And sadly, I think people don't really know any Spanish dish other than tortilla, jamon and paella. Italy. Freaking everything you can stuff in your mouth. If you ever drop by Quebec, which some people would call a country, but I'd call it a culturally distinct and wonderful province in Canada. Make sure to give Paltine a try. It's so damn good. If you ever go to the Philippines, try fresh coconut juice and buco pie coconut pie. I'm not a huge fan of coconut normally, but fresh coconut meat in a pie fresh chilled coconut juice absolutely smacks. Then there's calamansi juice. Calamansi is like a tiny round lime, except it tastes nothing like lime. It tastes sour and sweet with a zip zappy note to it. The Philippines is the only place where you can get fresh calamansi juice. And it tastes so goddamn good. It's subtly unique and underappreciated. If you ever end up in Nepal. Dal bat takari lentil. Rice. Vegetable curry is a must have every Nepali chef makes it differently. And it is always incredibly delicious. Odd sidebar. But Nepali cooks are absolutely world class. Who and Nepali mama's dumplings are to die for. And that's scratching the surface of the great things to eat in Nepal. Hummus. Balala. Shawarma. Chicken shawarma. Beef shawarma. Bed ganam lamb testicles. Fuera glam intestines stuffed with rice. Lamb tongues. Lamb. Brain. Kabab. Labne. Mujadara. Tabaule. Fatoush. Welcome to Lebanon. Edit. Pita bread. Lamajin. Kafta. Neef. Ashta cream with honey. Falafel. Shish torn of chicken. Manakish. Manash zata. Manash with. Cheese. 
Man ouch with sem som seeds and sugar mmmm. Keb. Babagan ouch. Bulgur cheese. Sveta meat turnover. Fowl. Mama owl. Tam garlic mayo. Malhamara. Feta cheese. Borgel. Morabi. Keb be labani i keb with lab and yogurt. Mlauki. Mtabal. Fried cauliflower on a beet mekli. Megli. Debs renman. Shaw but a das lentil soup. Omali laban with meatballs. Malfaf. Where a kenab where a karish tolmas meat inside grape leaves with rice. Mansaflam with rice. Raw kebe. Raw. Kafta. Raw soda. Keshuk. Muhal ABI. Rakaka cheese rolls. Edit you made my day. My most upvoted comment in all my reddit history. Love you all. And take care okay. Definitely paella if you come to Spain. If you ever visit Norway. Benekj tt salted, dried and often smoked sheep ribs steamed for several hours. Brunest caramelized cheese whey, smaller hove smoked and steamed sheep's head. And to wash it all down a handsome mango IPA. Scotch eggs, black pudding, or Yorkshire puddings UK. BBQ brisket if you're in Texas. And pulled pork BBQ with a vine gutter or mustard based sauce in the Carolinas. Edit the variations in BBQ are like sexual positions. Not only because the good ones are orgasmic, but also because you don't have to enjoy only one. You can love them all. A traditional Lebanese breakfast. For Bavaria it's quite obvious Weisswurst breeze and beer. Or Schweine Britain with K and L is also great. Ireland. Shepherd's pie. Guinness lamb stew. Fresh crab claws in a good seafood restaurant. A good sirloin steak. A breakfast roll baguette stuffed with black pudding. Sausages and bacon. Kebab if you come to Turkey. It's perfect. New Mexican cuisine. It's a sliver of Mexican food unique to the US, state of New Mexico. And most people have never either been there or had the food. To put it into perspective. When the US government decided to detonate the first atomic bomb. They did so in New Mexico, because near as I can tell they figured, if something was gonna go wrong they wouldn't hit anyone. The food. Spicy. They usually have to dial the spice way back for the stit. A lot of it is based upon hatch chilies, and is unlike any other Mexican-American food you've ever tasted. I used to live there, and have missed the food ever since I left. Philippines. Any one of the following. Annalisa's take home crispy patter. Eat it with white rice. Yum. Cebu lechon. No sauce needed. Carabao gimaras zambales mangoes. To be honest. Very disappointed with the comments here representing Indian food. Two things. For my money. That you need to try. If you are in India. One biryani there are at least 15. 20 distinct styles of biryani. Each with their own unique twist. Based on the region and the subculture. To be full of the earthy beef fry from the southern Indian state of Kerala. It's smallish cubes of beef slow cooked in coconut oil with spices and onions and pepper until it falls apart. If you ever encounter someone from Kerala, this is the secret handshake password to their good graces. When visiting the GL Rios nation of Sweden you should try. Fried herring with melted butter and boiled new potatoes in the summer. Fried herring on crisp bread sold from carts in the street in Stockholm during the summer. Meatballs with lingonberry jam not the ones from Ikea. Waffles with whipped cream and fresh cloud berries or cloud berry jam. Princess cake. Freshly baked cinnamon buns. Swedish pizza every small local pizza place have like 30 different varieties. Risotto in northern Italy. In Hungary there is one thing you must know about our food. It's unhealthy and heavy. If we eat, we eat a lot. With that said, babgulas is our traditional soup. Most commonly eaten with sour cream added in after served. Hal Paprix is our famous fish dish. It's eaten in big portions, with one whole bread as a side. Paprix crumply is also a traditional food filled with loads of goodness. Potato. Sausage other vegetables as you like them. And a lot of bread. We usually eat it with a corner piece of a bread instead of a spoon. Tejba ZS is a wonderful dessert. Milk. Rice and depending on what you like. Cinnamon or cocoa powder. Or both. We don't judge. Lex is something I can't leave out. Lots of vegetables and slices mixed in a stew. You mustn't miss that. As for a personal favorite, 
I would recommend Bob's Kenny R. It's the most simplest breakfast, yet I haven't saw it anywhere else in the world. Bread and eggs. If you want to know what makes it special, you have to try it. And with that I would like to conclude my Hungarian gourmet tour. I'm from Indonesia. You should try everything here. The food is just delicious as heck. Some notable foods include nasi goreng Indonesian fried rice. Martabak my personal favorite. Temp goreng and nasi uduk. Come to the east coast of Canada and get yourself a donair. Delicious.